So from now on, we will talk about solve the quadratic equations. So mainly, I'm going to divide two different sections. The first, using factoring method, and the other one, using the completing square method. So this video, we mainly focus on only using factoring method. Throughout the previous videos, you remember the factoring methods are using the greatest common factor and grouping in trinomial and binomial. So this time we will solve the equation, especially quadratic equation, using one of those methods. So look at the, uh, look at few examples. So a x x squared equal to sixty four. What do you think the answer of x? Is it eight? only 8. So the most common mistake, you just take a square root and then take answer is 8. This is only half right. So whenever you have these kind of questions, please make right side or decide there's no variable, just make them equal to 0. So this time I'm going to move 64 to the other side. Then this become x squared minus 64 equal to 0, right? Okay. Now, if I temporarily erase equal to 0 here and ask you a factoring of this one, then what kind of factoring method do we have to use? Yes, it's exactly binomial because x squared means x squared. 64 means a square. So I'm going to go back to equation part here. I'm going to factoring this binomial. Then you will get x plus 8 and x minus 8 now equal to 0. It means either this term equal to 0 or this term equal to 0. Maybe both are equal to 0. Then this equation will be 0. Therefore, we set up x plus 8 equal to 0 and the other side we can make x minus 8 equal to 0 and solve for x. So if you move this constant the other side then x can be negative 8 and in this side plus 8 then x equal to 8. Therefore answer become x equal to negative 8 or x equal to 8. Okay, now look at question B here. So x squared minus 5x minus 6 equal to 0. It is already equal to 0. Therefore, you don't have to uh, move around anything. Now, when you look at this form, what kind of a factoring method do we have to use? Is it greatest common factor or grouping or trinomial or binomial? Yes, if three terms, it must be trinomial. So trinomial, you know, we have method already, right? So I'm going to do that. So the leading coefficient, which is equal to 1, and I'm going to move this to the other side. So this become x squared minus 5x minus 6. And then don't forget a equal to 1. Now do a t chart. And then this will negative 6 and negative 5. And then you're finding two factor. Their multiplication become negative 6. It means one number sign must be minus. The other one must be plus here because negative time positive become negative. And now the sum become negative 5, which means the absolute larger value must have a negative sign compared to the other value. Now 6, we can um, break them out 6 times 1 or 3 times 2. 
So among these two pairs, which one gives the sum equal negative 5? Yes, negative 6 and 1. Therefore, open two parentheses and make x minus 6 over 1, x plus 1 over 1 equal to 0, which means x minus 6, x plus 1 equal to 0. Therefore, just make x minus 6 equal to 0 and x plus 1 equal to 0. Then x equal to 6 or x equal negative 1. That will be the answer for this equation. So now, C and D. So let us see. Negative 100x equal to 10x squared. As you see, the both sides include a variable. In this case, you better look for where the leading term is located. Leading term means the variable has higher power. So as you see, compared to x squared and x, so this is greater term, which means leading term here. Then now, the last time, I mean the, just a, a moment before, I ask you to make one side equal to zero. Since this is our leading term, I'm gonna remove this one on this side and then moving to the other side here. So which means you combine opposite of this form, which is plus 100x and plus 100x. Then this become zero equal to 10x squared plus 100x. Okay. Now, it looks like a binomial factory form, but not yet though, because if you can find any common factor, then you need to factor by that first. Okay, 10x squared and the 100x, what is the common factor? Yes, you can factor by 10 first, right? Then become x squared plus 10x. And do you see another factor? If you think x, that is correct. So x then become x plus 10. Between x and 10, do you see any other factor? No. Then cover the last row term here and then make multiplication symbol. Then this becomes 10x times x plus 10 equal to 0. So you can make so 10x equal to 0 or x plus 10 equal to 0 and divide by 10 so x equal to 0 and minus 10 then x equal to negative 10. Therefore this equation answer is x equal 0 or x equal negative 10. Okay now go to letter d here so x plus 1 square equal to 3x plus 7. Now, uh, I have seen many of you just uh, taking square root and make it more complicated here. Unfortunately, this side is not equal to 0 either, so we cannot do, we cannot solve this equation as it is. So we need to recompose this um, expression. Then how can we do so? Because this side is equal to something square, and the other side is just a binomial. Even though uh, it seems so much work and hassle, you have to expand this expression and recombine them. Okay, so I will do that. Okay, so x plus 1 square means x plus 1 times x plus 1. Now you multiply this out, then this becomes x squared plus x plus x plus 1, therefore x squared plus 2x plus 1 equal to 3x plus 7. Don't forget, we have right side expression already, so I just bring it down here, okay? Now, you need to um, analyze where the leading term located. So again, Leading term means 
the term has the highest power among all these terms. So as you see, this is the leading term. Therefore, I'm going to remove this uh, binomial on this side and move into the other side here. Okay? So, what can we do? We combine their opposite. Okay? So, minus 3x minus 3x minus 7 minus 7 then this term becomes 0 so this term becomes x squared minus x minus 6 oh it looks like a trinomial so now we can use trinomial factoring method so I'm gonna do a t-chart so negative 6 and negative 1 and the leading term is a 1 so this time I don't make a equal to 1 because 1 doesn't do anything now find two factor if you multiply them negative 6 the sum become negative 1 again multiply negative means one is minus the other one plus right since the sum become negative 1 uh, between them the va absolute value on negative sign will have larger value compared to a positive sign value. So we can break 6 times 1 and then 3 times 2. So which pair gives you the sum negative 1? Yes, this, right? So you can rewrite this. x minus 3 and x plus 2 equal to 0. Therefore, you can set up x minus 3 equal to 0 x plus 2 equal to 0 so x equal to 3 or x equal to negative 2 there will be answer for this equation